Hey guys, Dark Recycle on FPV, and it is, uh, I actually, this is my third time to make this video in the last mm, four hours. Uh, I ended it at about 3.30 in the morning, got up at about 6 to get started again, and um, ran into problem after problem after problem. And so finally I realized that, you know, uh, I, I need to look at a few things here because uh, I think maybe it's with the slowdown uh, of, of people going to work or what have you that the uh, overall uh, fix from companies, you know, updates, firmware patches and things are just like falling behind a little bit. And so uh, after realizing this uh, during this uh, last video, I finally decided to go ahead and just do the software myself, uh, offer it myself uh, from our website instead of having to go to the manufacturer's website. And this way we can uh, remove any of the glitches that I found during the video last night. So let me just get started. What we're working on today here, right, is um, we have an HDLRC uh, Sector 5 4S series uh, PNP plug and play. And with that, the customer who ordered that yesterday asked to have an X Lite S uh, shipped to him with it and also an RXSR receiver. Okay, so I said, Well, look, you know, I haven't done an X Lite, X -Lite S video. Uh, if you will wait a day, I'll go ahead and do the uh, software for you for free. I'll do all the setup and everything for free. He said, Great. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to put in split screen here. Right, and we're gonna go like this. I'm gonna show you exactly what's working with this uh, build today. So we got the X Lite S. We have a Toolkit RC uh, meter checker and tester. We have the firmware update cable, which in this case we can actually use the one that comes with the RXSR. But I have this here anyway because some of you can use what I'm doing today. Uh, and oh, there goes my little dog running around. I gotta make sure she's not getting lost. Okay, uh, you you can use these. So I put links on this, and I'm gonna show you the web page here in just a second. Um, and then we're I'm gonna use the 18500 batteries. Okay, that you can see here. See there? Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and I'm also gonna go over with you what we found. Um, so bear with me a second because I'm having to start a lot of things over again um, since this uh, became an issue. Um, and so I'm wanting to, I gotta make sure. All right, another thing that uh, I'm gonna tell you you're gonna need is, is a, um, a uh, uh, SD card. I will recommend, and this guy did not get one, this customer didn't. I'm gonna have to call him, let him know that he's gonna need one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and format this anyway, but it is better to have an SD card that you can keep inside your radio at all times, okay? So, and if you don't have any of those, uh, I can show you here. So let me just go and kind of jump over to um, our website now and show you what we're working on here uh, to help you with this, okay? So uh, let me do this, here you go. All right, so here's a website right now, uh, cyclonefpv.com. And if you go to our uh, blogs, posts, and tutorials, which I am doing a major upgrade on this because people have said, look, we like the way it used to be where each blog page was for an item and not co uh, everything compiled into one page. Like all the free sky downloads are now on one page. And like, no, we like to go and keep it uh, the way it was before. So I'm actually transitioning it back. And this will be the first video that's done like that. Okay. And I'll explain to you what I mean here. So if we go to tutorials, okay. And if you click on tutorials, the first thing you're going to see is this one that we're doing today. Now, the video is being made right now, so you won't see that there. Uh, well, you'll see it by the time this is uh, out, but it's not there right now when I show you this page. Okay, so here is the uh, X Lite S trans, uh, the transmitter, and the, um, the video that we're going to be doing was setting up the uh, FreeSky X Lite S with access and, uh, and the FreeSky RXSR. Now, it is an access edition receiver or transmitter, but um, it will run uh, D16 ACCST. And that's actually what we're gonna be using today anyway, so you get to watch how that's done as well, okay? So we're gonna click on that, and when you click on that, just for a little explanation here ahead of time, these are all the links to the things that I just talked about. This is to the radio, this is to the receiver, this is to the cable I showed you, this is to the actual drone that it's going in, and this is, gonna, this is to the Toolkit RC charger tester and checker that we're gonna be using during this video. Under here, now you would see a video below, which once we're done making this, it'll be published. But under here, you're going to see step one and step two. And step one involves doing OpenTX uh, uh, installs. Step two involves doing the firmware updates on the radio, okay? Uh, and th these steps are simply for the purpose of the downloads, all right? Now, what I noticed and what I've changed is the fact that I did something called local links. Now, you can do the OpenTX links where you go to their website and do it. Now, today, 2.3.7 is the... Uh, most up-to-date firmware um, and so that's what I'm offering in this page now by two weeks from now maybe 2.3.8 so if you want to here's a link here to go to their website so that you can see if 2.3.8 is out and then if it is hit me up and I'll do the software modification so that I include that in this link now the same thing for the um, free sky this is the biggest problem I had uh, with the last video we just made that I'm gonna have to uh, that I can't really do anything with now um, 
their website, uh, their downloads page is a little bit different now, and there are some uh, there are some options on their downloads page that simply won't work. I mean, the 2.1.0 update will not work. I could not get it at all to work with the X Lite S. There was not a 2.1.0 update for the X Lite S on their page, and when I tried to buy them, nothing worked. So what I did was I said, okay, I'm going to do a local link again, and from here you'll get the only update that you're going to need for the X Lite S uh, that is not going to be in the um, OpenDX software, and then you're going to from here, you're going to get the only uh, firmware update that you need for the RXSR for ACCST D16 that is not running the 2.1.0. So basically, you're just going to use the links I'm giving you. And if you look at the SD card contents here, some of you who've downloaded SD card contents before, you know it's 135 megs of file. Uh, but once you delete all the language, it's all removed and you're down to like 16 megs. My version, it says you see here it's English. I've already removed all the... Um, the other languages except English. So if you want this version, which is only 16 megs, and it's exactly how it needs to be for this setup, then just download the local link version. And you're gonna see me do all this right now, okay? Um, so, uh, all right, so here we go. Uh, let me go ahead and let's um, let's get started. I think the first thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna focus on, I guess I'll do the radio first. So let's go ahead and get started with the radio and opening this up. So I'm gonna set the receiver aside. Now the radio I have, I have, open two of these uh, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is when we open it, uh, let's look at the contents inside. Uh, obviously we have our manuals here, okay, which are in the top part. Let me zoom out just a little bit here if I can. Okay, so we have our manuals. There, let's leave that like that. All right. Uh, I'm not going to really do anything with those right now. We also have the uh, optional, and this is cool that they included this. This is the 18650 adapter. Uh, for the 18500, uh, all right, uh, to replace 18500 adapters or uh, uh, term terminating ends there. And I'll show you what that's all about. And then here's the radio itself. So we're going to just take that out. Might as well get started on this, guys. I don't want to waste too much time uh, doing things. You guys, most of you guys already know these things. And then here are the pieces that you need to, these rubber, um, these rubber plugs here will go in and patch up these holes that are open. But I'm going to show you what's important about this first. So <clears throat> first things first, I'm not going to be using the 18650s, so I'm going to leave those in there. I'm going to use the 18500s because I happen to have a pair of them already charged. So I'm going to take this case now and set it aside. And I'm going to leave this back here because it's going to play an important role in just a second. Um, all right. So to do this, uh, I recommend just taking one off at a time. So turn, this, uh, turn the right one to the left and slide that off. And then what you'll notice inside here, okay, and you'll have to just look, but... There's a negative symbol right here, right? So that negative symbol means we're putting in the battery with the ground down. So we're gonna slide this, and you can see on the battery here, it's ground, and then there's a positive symbol right there. So we're gonna pop that in, positive up. And then if you notice the inserts here, there's some slots cut out. So just take that slot and put it over this area here. And then when you get it over that, this will just push it in and turn it, and you're done with one side. And now we're gonna take the left side and turn it to the left. Same thing, there's a, there's a ground or negative sign right there, which means it's gonna go in the same way. And then go ahead and line up the slots here. Whoa, let me try that again. Just like that. And then turn it. All right, now we got our batteries in. <clears throat> now I did, I do wanna show you that if you notice that out of the box, the throttle or the left stick is uh, uh, fixed to go to the center automatically. And most of the, you guys want to change that. I think it's more of like a DJI style, I guess, where their quads come like that. So in this bag is going to be this long screw right here, right? This long threaded screw. screw. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and put that on. And we want to get rid of this right here. And we want it to just kind of stay down. So <clears throat> you're going to have this open screw slot right here. Just go ahead and put that in there. And make sure you thread it properly. Don't force it. It should go in pretty easy. And as you tighten that down, I'm going to hold this up. And you're going to see... Uh, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Okay, yeah. So watch the watch the stick as I tighten this down. All right. And I'm gonna slow down. There you see how it's dropping now. Uh, I think you could probably see that as it's dropping there. Uh, all right. So it's fully down now. Uh, and as you can see now, it just kind of flop. There it is. Okay. And if you hold it up, it stays down like that. All right. Now, to eliminate this flopping around, we want to tighten it here. So we're going to go to the second screw over here that's on this side, and I need this to quit. Let me see if I can get this to stop uh, uh, changing brightness mode. So hold on one second. Let me see if zoom, go to the white balance. 
is we're going to lock, I think we'll lock that in place. And we're going to lock this in place. Let's see if that helps. Okay. So uh, I don't want this to keep changing. Uh, all right. So we're going to tighten this one now, and that's going to add tension on here. And as you can see, as I slowly turn it, and I'm going to keep looking at it like this. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's it. That's good tension right there. All right. Now you can make it, you can tension it more, add more tension to it by tightening that screw down. But now we've got it set properly. Okay. So with that in mind, if you want, you can go ahead <clears throat> and you can take these uh, rubber pieces here and you can start closing this up. All right. Just like that. Just keep in mind that you only want to do that if you're sure you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these on right now, just because I think this is going to be just fine. All right. So we're almost done here. I am having a fun time trying to get these to fit. So bear with me a second. And we'll see if we can get this in here. There we go. All right. And then we're just going to put the thin ones over here, if you like. Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll be done. All right, so there we go. Okay, so we've got our pieces in now, everything looks good. <clears throat> now you can just take the rest of them, put them in the bag and hang tight a minute. All right, so with the radio now, with the sticks set, right, what we wanna do now is we wanna prepare <coughs> our SD card and prepare the software. So I've given you the links here um, but I do want to show you uh, one of the things is that I'm using a 64 gig card and I've done this before on my videos and so a 64 gig card cannot be read on one of these radios um, and so I'm going to change it and, and but the reason I did it is I've got a ton of these cards and if you go to our website if you need one um, you can go here and I think you can type uh, let me see if I go and I type uh, let me see SD uh, card maybe that'll come up yeah uh, nope maybe uh, let me see, I gotta go ahead and I thought they were on here. Yeah, there it is right there. So I'll have to redo this. But anyways, these 64 gig cards I got at a really good price. So I'm selling them at a really good price. Um, but you, you want to adjust them, right? <clears throat> so here's what you're gonna do. Is you're gonna downgrade them. You might as well just make them 16 gig. I mean, it doesn't really matter. So what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you how to do that is, and I've shown this before in the last video I did with the uh, X90 Plus 2019. But you're gonna, if you're in Windows, you're just gonna go to your, uh, I right click on the start button and I left click on run and I type control, it's already there. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna go to administrative tools. Uh, sorry, hold on, I just realized that you guys can't see that. So let's, let's try this. Okay, so again, what I was showing you was on our website. Uh, if you type in uh, 64 gig right here in the search, okay, and then you can uh, find this uh, 64 gig card right here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> all right, so once you do that, again, what I was saying was, I will go, let me close this down, I will go to the start button, right click, left click on run, type in the word control, open it up, go to administrative tools, and then go to commu computer management. Now look, I've seen people complain that I talk too fast or I move too fast, but this is the wonderful thing about recordings. You can slow it down, you can go, I'm just going to zoom through this because there are people that already know this part or this isn't significant to them, so we're just gonna move, okay? But feel free to pause it and slow it down. Um, all right, so anyways, once we go to administrative tools, we're gonna go to disk management. And what we're gonna see <clears throat> is our, I've already done this once, but I'm gonna delete this. So that, so forget this part here. What I want you to see is, this is what it would look like if you delete the volume, right? And what you wanna do is if you have a volume on here, and it most likely already came with a volume, I'm gonna show you what that would've looked like. If it already had a volume, it was gonna look something like this. Okay, so give it a second. It's going to automatically format it real quick. 
All right, so here's what the volume would look like. It would say new volume and then it would have the size. Now this is size is too big for the system to read. So you're gonna right click and you're gonna left click on delete volume and you click, click yes and that all new volume is gonna disappear, right? Now you're gonna right click on the area that's unallocated and left click on new simple volume. The wizard comes up, click next and just type in 16,000, one, six, zero, zero, zero. Okay, once that's in there, click next. Uh, assign the drive letter E, it doesn't matter what drive letter you assign it, click next. And here, what you want to make sure is the file system is FAT32. It may default to NTFS, please go to FAT32. And you want to make sure format this volume in the following settings. The dot is here, allocation size is default, volume label is new volume, that's fine. And you want to perform a quick format. So once you see all this, click next. And then here, click finish. And what you're going to see happen now is it's going to create, you're going to see a screen pop up. That's your new formatted screen. Okay, so there that is right there. And you're going to see, here you go. You have your 15.63 gigabyte uh, FAT32, which is going to be able to be read. With that done, you can now close out of everything. Okay? So there. Now we're going to go back to our internet page. Now you have two options here. And what I've done before is I've always loaded the software onto the memory stick and then moved it over. But um, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to do the following. We're going to go ahead now and go to our eject here. So I'm going to safely remove the hardware and I'm going to tell it to eject. And it has. So now I'm going to, hold on, let me make sure I do this. I'm going to right click and say eject the new volume. There it is. So it's safe to remove. So I'm going to take that memory stick out right here. <clears throat> let me show you what we're going to do now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this with the name up, right? We're going to slide this into the radio and you're going to hear it click when it locks in place. Just like that. So just click it. It's locked in place now. So that's good to go. So once we do start doing our firmware updates, this is going to be easy to go. Okay. Now it's time to go ahead and start getting the software. So let's do that. So first thing we're going to do is go back to our tools, our tutorials page. So click on tutorials and uh, go to the um, first one here, which is going to be the setting up the free sky light. Now, if you want, you can just search through here and you're going to find uh, uh, free sky uh, uh, X light uh, and then X light S. You'll find it all here on the, on the words that we use to search these, but it's going to be right here. Setting up the free sky X light S edition, click that. And now here comes the information that you need. The first one is we're going to need to do the companion 2.3.7 download. Okay. Now I've already put this on our website, so you can just click it and download it. So if you click right here, all right, your download should start and there it is right there. Now I've installed this 30 times, but I'm going to install it again so we can walk through this together. All right. So when that's downloaded, um, <clears throat> what you can do now is depending on where you want to save these things, my, my, my recommendation is to do the following. Um, and, and I guess I could have done this before I did the download. My recommendation here is now, now open your uh, open your Windows um, uh, uh, file explorer and start creating a one location for your radio with all the files you're going to do with it, right? Because you want to be organized. I do mine in my documents folder here, for examples. So if you look right here, I just did a video on the FreeSky X9D Plus 2019. So I'm going to do now the uh, uh, the FreeSky X Lite S. Uh, version, right? Uh, edition. So uh, under the documents folder, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to my new folder icon at the top here. I'm going to let, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to make a new folder. Let me get my keyboard over here and I'm going to type similar to what I typed on the other one. F R S K Y X light S. Okay. That's it. I'm going to hit enter. All right. And basically everything I do now for this X light S needs to go in this folder. Follow me now on the next part and just Trust me that this is how you need to do this, okay? The first thing you want to do is you want to make another folder. So uh, you can, in your, in your empty FreeSky X Lite S folder, click on new folder and right there call it SD card. Just do that, okay? Trust me. And then click off of that somewhere on the blank screen. Click the new folder icon again and this time type backup, okay? And then a third time, right click and, uh, I'm sorry, and uh, click on the screen here and then click on new folder. And this time, type downloads. All right. <clears throat> so, so far, we've got three folders that we've created inside our new FreeSky X Lite S folder in our documents, right? So, this is going to be the backup when OpenTX asks you where you want to backup. This is going to be the SD card contents folder when it asks you which folder you want to use. And this is going to be where you put all your downloads. Inside your downloads folder, if you were to double click that, you would make three new folders. All right. For this particular build, I would say make three new folders. The first one is going to be called OpenTX. Okay. Anything that you download from OpenTX needs to go into this folder. Okay. The next one is going to be called, uh, let's go to folder and we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call this one FRSKYTX. 
Okay, and that's gonna be all transmitter downloads that you have, all right? And then the next one is gonna be called uh, FRSKY. Rx, and that'll be all downloads for your receivers, okay? Very organized way to do it. So what we just did is we downloaded the uh, uh, companion 2.3.7. So if you click this arrow right here and you go show in folder, what I want you to do is I want you to right click on that file, which is right there, right? So, whoops, don't, don't open it. Right click on it and then click cut, left click on cut and go to your new folder in your documents, which is gonna be your FreeSky uh, X Lite S Go to Downloads, go to OpenTX, and paste it, all right? This is where we're gonna stay organized, okay? Um, now, the next thing we wanna do, we're gonna go back to our web page now, and we have the SD card contents that I've already edited, okay? So I would also click on this one so that you can get the quicker file, and you don't have to remove all the English or all the other languages, so just click on that, and you're gonna see the, um, the uh, zip file is going to download. Should download here in just a second. There it is, okay? And we're gonna, again, say show in folder. So that's gonna be in our downloads folder. So we're gonna right click on that and click cut. And then we're gonna go back to our um, documents and go to our uh, uh, X Lite S. And then here we can go back to our downloads and this is OpenTX as well. This is the SD card contents. So we can right click and paste here, okay? And now uh, we want to extract this, right? So once you've pasted it here, right click on it and left click on extract all. And leave this show uh, files here, click extract. And this is gonna be much faster, okay? So hang tight, it's gonna go ahead and extract this real quickly for you. And then I'm gonna show you what to do with this file, okay? And again, this is the best way I've found to set things up because it allows you to stay very organized. And when it comes to finding these files, it's gonna be kind of critical. So this is the, now I have a Mac OS here. That's because I did this part on my Mac. Um, I may update that file so that, as a matter of fact, I will. So let me just delete that so that you don't have to see that, okay? Um, there will not be the Mac OS by the time I'm done. I will, uh, I should update, but if, I, if, it's, if it's on there, just delete it. That's because Mac puts a file on there. Um, so here's our, here's our uh, extraction uh, contents. So if you look, here's your companion 2.3.7. Here's the zipped file of the SD card contents, and here is the extracted version. What I would do here now is I would highlight all of these, right click on this and click copy, and then now go to your uh, main folder, your FreeSky uh, X Lite S folder that we created, and go to your um, SD card right here, and right click and click paste. And what it's gonna do is this is all the SD card contents that we want, okay? From here, from here what we wanna do is um, we are going to now in our firmware folder in our SD card in our firmware folder we're going to double click and we're going to do make similar folders to what we just created before so we're going to in this blank area click new folder and what we're going to call this is we're going to type this open tx uh, sorry I spelled that wrong open ugh, tx dash fw for firmware okay then we're going to right click again or we're going to click on new folder again and this time we're going to call it fr SKYTX-FW for transmitter firmware. And then we're going to do another one. And this is going to be called FR SKYRX-FW for receiver firmware. And that should not be a capital R. Just doesn't make a difference, but it's just for aesthetic purposes. Should be just like that. Okay. So you have these three folders here, and these are the folders that you're going to read on your transmitter. Okay, they're going to be on here when you're searching for updates. Okay, so you want to make them as easy as possible to find. In here, you will have subfolders. So <clears throat> for your OpenTX, for your uh, receiver and your transmitter, we know we're working with an RXSR. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my RX firmware folder and I'm gonna create a new folder called um, uh, uh, RXSR and then I will just put dash uh, D16 because I'm not doing the access software on this one. Okay, but if you are doing access, make another folder that says RXSR-access or ACC or whatever, okay? So that's for the RXSR. So any files that I use, it's gonna be under there because for me, I have multiple quads, right? And, and so I need to have an RXSR folder, an XS, XM plus folder, an XM folder. I mean, all of them, okay? So X4R, SB. And so I need them all categorized, but they're all part of the FreeSky RX firmware folder. So you make subfolders under that. Now, go back to your firmware folder and under the TX, right? 
uh, double click that and create a new folder. And this one we're going to call the um, uh, X Lite S. Okay. And that's going to be where you put all your X Lite S uh, firmware as well. Okay. And then go back to your firmware folder and then you have your OpenTX. Now this one you can leave alone because you're just going to basically put the, put the uh, OpenTX firmware in this folder. All right. So going back now to your SD card contents, you're going to leave everything else out. If you look in sounds, it's all empty already. All right. Uh, but um, under our firmware, you're going to see that we have folders and then we have subfolders there. And we will be putting items in these subfolders shortly. Okay. So <clears throat> now that we've got our SD card contents done, let's go ahead and extract our 2.3.7 executable file. Okay. We're going to click yes. And we're going to have it install. And I've already done this, but let's go ahead and do this anyway so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, click next. And it's going to ask you if you want to run it. Sure, go ahead. Now I have to, and mine's going to open, and I need to delete the X uh, light uh, radio that I made because I want to do this live with you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go under my settings and my radio profiles. I'm going to find this X light S customer edition, and then I'm going to tell it to um, delete it. Okay, because so, we're going to start this fresh with you guys. Okay, so if you open this up, um, now hang tight a second because this is where we're going to be, but first we need to finish doing our firmware. Okay. So you can leave that running. And now what you want to do is you can uh, go back to our web page here. So we've got these two, right? <clears throat> and so we're done with step one because we didn't use the open links. We use what I provided you. Now we're going to go to step two, which is going to be the X Lite S, the ISRM, which is the internal module uh, uh, update. Okay. And this is 1.1.3. And this is not included in the, um, uh, uh, firmware, the OpenTX stuff. So you're going to click here to download this. And again, it's going to download to your downloads page, but we're going to go ahead and just download the RXSR one as well. So click that. Whoops, that's the wrong file. I meant to click up here. Sorry. Click here. Okay. Now I do want to show you um, real quickly because I did click this. Let me show you what's happened here. Okay. So I'm going to click the free sky link to the RXSR downloads page and I'm going to show you what they've got. Okay. What they have on their site right now is all the firmware for D16 is gone, right? Uh, meaning it's not, it doesn't pop up at the beginning here. What you see is the uh, D16 V2.1.0. Okay. Uh, which is a patch to the 2.0.1 that came out uh, when China was dealing with this coronavirus badly and we could not get much going on. Either way, neither one of these work properly on the X Lite S. And so I'm telling you to stay away from these. Don't download them. And that's why we're not offering them. What I did was I went to this link here. And what that does is it brings you to the file that I just provided on the website, which is right here. Okay. So now we're going to go to our downloads folder. So I'm just going to say show in folder. And here are the two things that we just um, downloaded. Uh, so let me get, uh, where am I at here? We downloaded this one and we downloaded uh, right here. Okay. So we're going to take both of these and you won't even, you won't see this one here. So just, uh, you can, you can delete that all together. And as a matter of fact, I, I know that probably made it a little confusing. So, uh, but what I can tell you is if you were on our page and you downloaded, uh, because I've done this twice, uh, I've got some of these files already on here. But if you see right here, um, you're looking for the, uh, right here is the V point. If you look at the, in the file in the bottom there, it shows you it's the uh, version uh, 191128, which means it's November 28, 2019. Okay, so if you look in your downloads folder um, right here, that is the one that we downloaded. So you're going to take these two files, okay, and you're going to right click on them and click cut. And you're going to go to your uh, folder that you created in your documents. It's going to be your X Lite S. Put it downloads and you can paste them here because you have one for the receiver and one for the transmitter. And so um, we're going to have to split these up. So let's just paste them here into the downloads folder and then we'll drag them where they need to go. Okay. So the um, X Lite S and Pro uh, download for the ISRM, that's going to go into your TX. So from here, you can uh, click cut, open your TX here, and then just click. Uh, let me make sure I've got this right here. Um, just right here, click paste. Okay. And then go back and go to your downloads in here. And then on your, uh, this one that we downloaded the RXSR, right click and left click on cut, and then go to the RX and just click paste. 
Okay, so now you have your RxSR file, and we're going to go ahead and extract that. Okay, and there it is right there. And I believe this is a folder and then a subfolder, so let's verify. It is. So there's no need to have two levels of folders uh, hierarchy on this. So when you double click the next one, you're going to see these files here. Now, look what, you, what you're looking at here is you're looking at the... Um, this is also the EU, and then we don't need the EU if you're doing this in the US. So I'm going to click on those, and I'm going to uh, click, uh, I'm going to highlight those and click delete. I don't need, all I need are these two, of which I'm going to use the FCC. I'm not using F port right now, okay? So I'm going to now go back one folder, which is right here, right? So if you double click that, you see that. So I'm going to go back one folder, and I'm going to right click and click cut, and I'm going to go back to my uh, SD card, go to firmware go to Rx firmware and go to uh, the Rx right here and I'm gonna paste that here. So under your, <clears throat> under your uh, SD card in firmware, under the FreeSky Rx firmware, you should now have the Rx SRD16 and in there you should have the one folder that contains these two files, okay? So let me turn that off. All right, now, getting back, um, let's go to the, uh, I can't get my phone to stop, guys. I apologize. Uh, so now let's go back, and we're going to go to our firmware, and we're going to go to our uh, downloads folder, and we're going to go to our TX now, right? And we're going to extract our XLite uh, uh, ISRM uh, file. So let's go ahead and click Extract All, and it's going to show us that as well. All right, so let's close this, and here's the folder here, and inside, again, there's another subfolder. And what we have here is we have the P and the S. The P is for Pro, and the S is for this edition. I'm not going to delete uh, either one. So I'm just going to go up one folder and I'm going to right click and cut and I'm going to go to my card contents and I'm going to go to my firmware and I'm going to go to my TX folder and under my XLite subfolder, I'm going to paste this. All right. So again, just to recap, you should have on your SD card in firmware, you should have RX, then you have your RXSR and then you have the one file, one folder that you need for that. And then uh, when you go to your firmware for your TX, you should have your XLite S folder, and then you should have the one folder that you need for that, okay? So that is on your SD card folder, all right? Now, the last piece that we're gonna get for this OpenTX firmware, this is gonna be what we download from OpenTX itself. So right now we're gonna get going to that, and I'm gonna show you. So you've pretty much got your SD card set up, and please make sure you do it this way. It's gonna be a lot easier for you, I promise. So, and it's gonna help with this video a lot, all right? So let's go ahead and go to our OpenTX now, all right? Now, the OpenTX is waiting to be plugged in, to, to waiting to have the radio plugged in. So we're gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna show you the radio here real quick. All right, there's our radio right now, okay? So to get this connected to the USB and to get it to, into the radio, what you're gonna do is you're gonna press this joystick down, like straight down, straight down the center, okay? And while you're doing that, you're gonna press this power button. When you do it, you're gonna let go immediately afterwards, right? So watch, there, just let go. Now you're gonna get this bootloader screen and you're gonna get all these options and it may be hard to read that a little bit, but um, let me see if I can just angle this up just a little bit. Okay, so I have already messed with the firmware here, but assume that this is just out of the box. So what you wanna do now is, now that you're at this screen where it says OTX bootloader, it says write firmware, restore EEPROM or exit, just go ahead and take your USB cable and plug it in. You'll hear your computer initialize. All right, and then what we're gonna do here is um, we're gonna go back and now we're gonna do this here. Okay, so there we go. So we're in our system here and we've got our transmitter hooked up and it says on the screen of the transmitter, USB connected. So now we need to set up our radio profile. So go to your settings tab here, right? And go to radio profiles and then, whoops, setting. Okay, hold on, it's, it's gonna load up, uh, sorry, it's gonna load up the um, SD card as well uh, once it reads it. So anyways, go to settings and go to um, uh, radio profiles and then click add radio profile. And here what I would do is I'm gonna name mine um, uh, customer uh, dash X9, uh, oops, X, sorry, X light S, okay? And I'm gonna come, that's the name that I'm gonna use to find it and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go to um, find my radio which is the uh, X light uh, S that we're looking for, which is right here. So it's the, it says X light S forward slash pro so click that. And then, uh, the menu language will be English. And then what we're going to do here, and I'll explain again, there's a video that explains what these options mean. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to click the following, uh, no heli flex R9M 
uh, Lua script and the new font. I do like the new font. It seems to read a little bit easier. I like it. So let's just click that and you'll see what it's like. The rest of these you can leave, you can leave alone right now. Okay. Uh, there we go. All right. Now, um, when we're done with this, we're going to scroll down and go to the SD structure path. And that's why we made those folders initially. So you're going to click select folder. And what you want to do is you want to find your folder. So go to documents then go to your um, uh, X Lite S folder. And then there's your SD card. So once you click on that one time, it's going to click the folder and just click select folder and it populates your backup folder. We also created. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So click select folder. And then we're going to go back to our documents folder. And there's our X Lite S folder there, and then click backup. It populates right there and click select folder. Perfect. So far, so good. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to enable automatic backup before writing firmware. I'm all in favor of that. You can skip these two. I don't really care about that, uh, but just make sure that it says these mode two and RETA for right now. Uh, go ahead and click append version number to firmware file name, and you can click to offer to write the firmware after it's downloaded. I do like that as well. Before you click OK, go to application settings at the top. And on here, what we want to do is the only thing we want to do is make sure this may not be populated right now. So click select folder and again, go to documents and then go to your um, uh, X Lite S and click backup folder again and click select folder. Okay. Everything else here is good. Make sure these are all checked and set. You want stable releases. You'd use model wizard, blah, blah, blah. And now click okay. Now your radio is set up, okay? So what you're gonna do next is now OpenTX says, okay, under this radio profile, if you ask for a download or firmware update, it knows to look for the firmware for that specific radio with those specific options checked. And that's what this arrow is all about. Now, I'm gonna click this, but I've already downloaded this once, so I won't be prompted like you will be, okay, most likely. So click download, right? And I'm gonna click check for updates. Okay, so I, I, I did get uh, prompted because I deleted it, so that's good. So here it's telling me that I have a new version available. Do I want to download it? Now pay attention to what we're going to do. You're going to click yes, okay? And you're going to store it um, in the uh, SD card that we created. So what you're going to do is go to your documents folder, go to your X Lite S, go to your SD card, go to firmware, go to OpenTX, and you're going to drop this in here. But before you do that, just change the name. Shrink it down a little bit, okay? So just call it OpenTX. We know you have an X Lite, so as long as you know that, you're good. So just make it OpenTX-2.3.7 uh, bit. And let me go ahead and delete, remove this reader there, okay? So that's what your file should look like right there. And there's a very important reason to do it like this. So just go ahead and shrink it down like that. Uh, make sure there's no spaces in there. I don't think there are. Okay, there we go. And now click Save. Okay, now it's going to download this. And it's going to ask if I want to write this to my radio. And I'm going to say yes. So go ahead and click yes. And here you're going to see where it's looking at. That's the folder we created. And it's going to tell you all about the version. Uh, we're going to use this splash screen for now. Now, one thing that you may notice is sometimes, and on the X9D 2019 uh, I, I did a couple days ago, I had a hardware compatibility error. And that is sometimes a glitch um, because I knew the firmware was right. So if you do get this glitch and you're 100% sure the firmware you download is correct, you can retry. If, if your firmware update, uh, update doesn't work, you can retry to update it without this check mark. But I don't think you're going to have that issue here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure everything looks like this. Leave this checked, please, and click Write to TX. Okay, and you'll see the progression bar behind it. It's writing. It's very quick. Okay. And it says it's done. It's flashed. Okay. So now you can click, I guess, OK here and close here. Now, one more thing I want to point out. <clears throat> you saw here where it said download, <clears throat> excuse me, download SD contents. Okay. So <clears throat> we've already done that. <clears throat> we already did that, so you don't need to worry about that. All right. Now, if you get a 2.3.8, uh, then we haven't done that. You can either download it from here or you can let me know or, or go to the OpenTX website, but we've already done all this part. So now you're just going to click OK. Now, <clears throat> you're almost done. The one thing that we need to do now is we need to synchronize the, the card contents folder on the computer with our SD card in the transmitter, okay? And to do that, because if you look here under Windows Explorer and I go to the SD card called New Volume, that's the one we created, you'll see that there is nothing in here, but we need it to be in here. That's what this button's for right here. This is a uh, SD card synchronization. So it takes your SD card contents folder that you told that you told it was that during the setup and it matches it against what's in the transmitter. And it's going to give you some options on how you want to copy these over. So we're going to click this first and you're going to see here <clears throat> the first one is right here and that's our folder. 
Uh, documents, free sky, X. okay, that's right. Now it does not see our radio folder. So if you do show that it doesn't see it and you see this red uh, message right here, no radio or SD card detected, click this folder here to search and go to your new volume. Click on it once to where it says folder volume and click select folder. That error is gone and now you can do this. Now, the option are you can sync in the directions, both directions. So sync direction will be both directions, destination folder first. So it's gonna send to that first and then it's gonna read from that any files that were changed that aren't local, okay? And then it's gonna tell you copy only if newer. So you've got all these uh, options here. Uh, we're gonna leave these as default and we're gonna click start. Now it's gonna take just a little bit, but just watch it go, okay? So start. And here it goes. <clears throat> now, while that's happening and we're letting that run, all right, so there's no sense in just sitting there, uh, it's gonna run for a little bit. Um, we're gonna get ready to do a few other things. One of the things I do wanna show you, and I'm gonna swap screens here just like this, is when I lift this radio up, right? You see these three pins right here. These are going to be your S port update pins, right? Now with the RXSR, it actually comes with the cable that you need for that. Okay. And, it, and the RXSR has a plug on the end, right? But the regular radios, radio receivers don't. So we sell this cable. So you can find this on our website. If you need the cable, it's $2. Um, and I've, I've got the link in the uh, tutorial section there. Um, in either case, when you plug this in, you're plugging it in with the ground facing to the outside. So it will go from left to right. It'll go yellow, red, black. So once you plug that in, and you can do that now, there's no big deal, right? <clears throat> you plug this in, and then this is actually going to connect to the receiver itself, and you need to plug it in accordingly, right? So it'll plug in just like that. Now you can leave it like this for the time being, all right? But this is going um, to, I need to dim this down real quick. So let me, let me see if I can... Uh, change that. Is, that. is that what I want? I can't remember. I cannot get this to, oh, there we go. Hold on. I'm trying to get it to where you can read the screen, guys, and it's kind of a little pain because of the brightness of the screen. And I may just adjust the brightness there, but let's just see if I'm going to tell it to uh, lock. There we go. And lock. All right, let's see if that works. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you this now. Our, let's go back to our screen here for our update. Okay, so we are done. Uh, it checked it all and you can see it uploaded. Uh, it created files and then it skipped coming back down on files. So you have a total of 580 files uh, between the two, 290 on, on the uh, SD card and 290 on the computer. So it checked a total of 580 files and it said that, okay, on the SD card there aren't any, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, create 290 files on the SD card. Then when it read it back, it skipped 290 because they're identical. So it didn't need to write anything back to the computer. Once you see this, just go ahead and click close, okay? And from this point, you're pretty much done. So follow what we're gonna do next. I like this step. It's a new step I've put in, and it does help in case there are issues reading your SD card when you're trying to flash the bootloader. Okay, so what you wanna do now is locate your um, USB, the safely remove option for your USB. Right click on it and left click on eject new volume, okay? All right, and then go back and right click on it again and left click on eject Tyrannus right there. Okay, perfect. Okay, now pull the SD card, uh, pull the uh, USB out, and you're gonna get to this screen here. So let me show you what we're working with now. Okay, you're gonna get to this screen and you're gonna have the op three options here and you're gonna be able to go to exit, okay? So just use, sorry, use this joystick here, go down and press it straight down in the center, exit. Okay, now you're gonna get, when it reboots, you're gonna see these errors here. So just exit out of all that and turn the power off. Okay, this is what we need to do next. Now, all I want you to do now is I want you to just go straight in and plug this USB cable straight into the radio without doing anything else, without pushing the power button or anything. Just plug it in. There you go. You hear your, you hear your computer initialize. So now let me show you what we got, okay? So you won't see anything on your screen, by the way, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to now write to the bootloader, okay? Now there's two ways we can do this. We can do it from the SD card, but in an instance where there's a problem with the SD card, we wanna go ahead and get this out of the way so you can plug your controller directly in without turning it on or doing anything else, and you will be able to do that with the following method. So you're gonna to go to your OpenTX program, and you're gonna to go to this icon here that says write firmware to radio. When you write the firmware to the radio, which is what we did earlier, when you write it without going into your, um, without uh, going into the DFU mode, right, then you will uh, be writing to the firmware itself and not to the bootloader. Now we're gonna write to the bootloader. So if you follow the same steps, but just by plugging in the USB, just click this, and the screen is gonna look completely different when it does this watch. So now you're gonna get this white screen, right? And it's actually updating the bootloader itself now and nothing else. So this is not doing the same thing it did prior. All right. 
Actually, this is the DFU uh, mode. Sorry, my apologies. <clears throat> this is going to be the STM32 bootloader mode, and you will see that when you highlight the USB here. If you click on it, you're going to see uh, STM32 bootloader mode. And so that's what this is. This is bootloader, and I think actually the other one may be considered DFU mode. can't remember. But in either case, there's two different ways to do this, and we're going to do it this way um, to make sure that we've upgraded the firmware on the radio and we've upgraded the bootloader firmware. Okay, So both are going to read 2.3.7 when we restart. Okay. So now that it says it's done, you can close, all right? And we can now right click again and left click on eject, and we're done. So check this out. Now when I turn the radio on. Welcome to OpenTM. Okay, our throttle is not right because we haven't calibrated yet, but let's now go ahead and get busy with this. All right, so just click exit, exit, exit. Now I had named a model in here earlier today when I was doing the first video, but I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do. So here's my model, here's everything. Um, but I believe what you're gonna see is you're gonna, if, if you go to use your joystick right here and you press it to the right and hold it, you're gonna get to your model screen. And if you just, again, now just press quickly. Okay, so what you would, what you would most likely see is something that looks like this. So let me just go ahead. I really wanted to re redo this and I should have. Uh, oh my gosh, sorry. I, I really know that this isn't that important, but I want to make it clear. And I think it's gonna, I can't remember if it has a capital M, actually it might, I think it does. And then this may have a number one. I can't remember if the one is actually off or not. I don't remember. So, um, but anyways, it's gonna say something like model one, forget it, okay? I know I'm not doing it a perfect, but when you're model, you'd have model one or whatever it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that right off the bat. So I'm gonna to hold to the right, and then I am going to go right real quickly, and I'm going to now change it. And this is for a customer that got the HDLRC Sector 5. So I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly what I just did, and um, I'm going to, uh, Make it say HDLRC. Okay, and that was basically a waste of time, I guess, because you guys already saw that, but my apologies, so let's click exit. Okay, so I've got HDLRC in my model here, okay, which I think you guys can see that. Hopefully you can read that. I know the glare is pretty bad, so I'm trying my best here. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually... Okay, so I'm going to show you here. We want to go to the menu screen. I'm going to see if I can kind of dim this down a little bit. So I'm going to hold this to the left. This gets us to our menu screen. I'm going to go over right one, two, and right here, I'm going to go down. Now, I need to set all this up, but I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to see if I can change the um, screen here to make it a little bit more legible. So backlight. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, brightness. I wonder if I can dim this down a little bit more. Well, that doesn't help me either, does it? And if I go all the way up, that's a little intense too. So let's see if we can find a happy common ground here. Uh, maybe this, okay, so what does that say? I'll go to 30, okay? So there's uh, 30, and uh, hopefully we can read this. I think if I just angle this a little bit, let me use this memory stick uh, case there. The glare won't be so bad. Okay, so perfect. There we're at, okay? So now uh, let's get back so we can see. So we've got our, our model name now at this point, right? Now we have a couple things that we need to do. We still need to apply the updates that we downloaded, right? So we have the ISRM update that we're going to uh, apply to the uh, uh, stick uh, to the uh, transmitter, <clears throat> and that's the internal update. And then we have the RXSR update that we're going to apply to the uh, receiver, right? So let's go ahead and start with that first and then we can start doing some other changes. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hold the stick uh, to the left. We get to our main menu screen here and then we're going to go over to the right one. There's our SD card contents and we're going to scroll down to firmware and press this down center. Okay, now you understand like it's all organized nicely here so it's going to make it much easier. So first we're going to do the internal of the radio. So let's go to the FreeSky TX, click it, and there's our X Lite S folder, click it, and then there is our new software, the 1.1.3, click that. And remember, we're gonna use the S version because this is the S version of the X-Lite, not the P for Pro. So let's go ahead and hold that down. 
And then you're going to get this menu that comes up and it's going to say, do you want to flash the S port, the internal module, or the external module? Well, you don't want to flash the S port because that's where this is. And you don't have an external module. There's nothing on the back of this radio, as you can see. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to flash the internal module. So by all means, just go to internal and then press the center. And you're going to watch it progress. Okay. So <clears throat> give that a second. It's going to be writing. It's going to take just a little bit of time here. While that's happening, I do want to show you a few things with the RXSR. Um, so I'm going to zoom out for just a second here so I can go over this with you because these are some of the common mistakes I see with people when they're using the RXSR. So if you're setting this up at home, please remember a couple things. The RXSR has the option for SBUS out and SBUS in. It also has the option to have the SBUS out changed over to CPPM. Okay. Now, what's important to understand is the cable that comes with the XS or the RXSR. Where did I put that cable? It is somewhere here. And it's not this one. That's not the one I'm talking about. There's one that's like a five, uh, five pin cable, and I must have put it somewhere, and I do not know where that is. Let me check real quick and try and toss that. Okay. So nope, didn't toss it. Now I'm gonna find it, and I'll find it. Just, oh, here it is. Okay. So this is the cable that comes with it. Okay. And what I need you to understand is, unlike most FreeSky receivers, um, the SBUS is actually going to be running on the green cable here and not the yellow cable. Like if you use an XM Plus, you have three cables. And those three cables, let me get this keyboard out of my way. Those three cables, those three pins are black, red, and yellow, right? So it's, it's a ground, positive, end, um, and then SBUS, right? Or, okay, so in this case, uh, the yellow is strictly designated for S port only. Okay, so if you're not running telemetry or if you're not running S port, then you will not be connecting this wire you'll only be using the yellow wire here to update the, the, the receiver, okay? You will be using the green only. So if you were to use only three wires to make this work, you would need black, red, and green, not black, red, and yellow. And that's probably the biggest mistake I see people make. It's like, well, hey, it's not working. I'm like, well, that's because you got the wrong cable. The next thing is, um, this receiver works for SBUS and CPPM. And what that means is, is that you have two protocols on here and they're controlled by the uh, bind button. When the receiver's on, if you see a blue light lit, that means you're in SBUS mode on the green cable. If there's no blue light when you're on and bound, that means that you're in CPPM mode and you won't see anything happen in beta flight if you haven't plugged into the SBUS port, okay? So what you want to do is, once you, if you're troubleshooting and you know that you have the green cable connected to the S bus on the flight controller, you need to check and see if you have the blue light on. And if you don't, then while the receiver's on, hold that uh, bind button for like three or four seconds, the blue light's going to come on and it's automatically in S bus mode. Okay, those are just little tips to help you. All right, so if you look here now, it says that the flash is done. So we're going to go ahead, let me zoom in just a little bit there. So now you can hit the exit button here. Scroll back up now to the two dots, click the center there, uh, click it again, click it again. And now we want to go to the FreeSky RX firmware folder, click that. And then we're going to go to the RXSR D16 folder, click that. And then we're going to go to our new folder, the RXSR ACCST uh, version 191128. Again, that stands for November 28, 2019. Click that. And we are not running F port right now. Uh, I will do a video on F port later, but what I'm going to do right now is just FCC. So we're going to click that. Uh, sorry, and hold it down. And it's going to ask you here, do you want to flash S port, uh, internal or external? Now look, if you pick the wrong one, you could break your controller. So please pay attention. This is on the S port. Okay. So this is the S port. So you want to click S port. So just click that, press the center and watch. Now what you should see is lights start lighting up and there you go. You're going to have the green one first, then you're going to have the red one. Okay. Perfect. So, so far we are in good shape. All right. Now, while that's running, um, Getting back to this, if you are going to not use, like the white one, you're not using any S bus coming in. Uh, therefore, you can remove the white cable altogether. Okay, and to do that, you just lift the tabs up right here and gently and then pull the wire out and save it. If you decide you want to use it later, you just pop it back in. Same for the yellow wire if you're not going to use S port. Okay, um, outside of that, that does it for this cable. And I'll be installing this on the HDLRC here in just a minute so you'll be able to see that. Okay, so there's that. Now, we're going to be using the toolkit RC to set this up. And um, uh oh, did I hit something? I think I may have hit something. Shoot. Okay, let me click exit. And let's try this again. I just, I don't know what happened, but let me try this again. I don't know if I touched something or not. Um, <clears throat> so on here, 
you can see that there is a, a three pins like there are on the radio. And this will actually power up with a LiPo or anything. And then I can plug in my, uh, uh, my receiver and I can bind it. And then I can see the actual sticks moving on here to know that if I'm bound properly. So I don't have to wait till I plug it into a flight controller and then see if it's working or not. Now that did concern me here a little bit. So I wanna see if this is having an issue riding or maybe I did hit something. So I'm gonna kinda of let it go on its own there. And then I'm going to open up this um, uh, HGLRC uh, quad and see. Now I really wanna see this thing not have a problem here because this is the firmware that's being loaded. Uh, if it does have an issue, I may pull a new RXSR only because this thing has been abused by me over the last uh, few hours as I've been loading every kind of firmware possible just to see where it's gonna break and what its limitations are. I mean, I have to do that, right, before I send it to you guys. <clears throat> so I can at least teach you guys properly uh, what I know, and you know, not teach you as much as show you, demonstrate. Okay, so let's put this stuff away. Let's clean up our table a little bit. And we're almost done. By the way, this is the build I did last night. It was a five and a half hour repair. This was hell, but man, it came out great. And I'm so excited to get this off to our customer. Um, he's really cool. And I know he's gonna be really excited to see this. I mean, we ended up doing carbon fiber repair. Uh, we did board replacements. I mean, there's a lot of work done, but uh, it's gonna be great. Okay, so hopefully, I think, I'm, I think I must've just bumped it when I lifted up the Toolkit RC and that's why it stopped. So we're gonna let this keep running. Hopefully it's gonna run without error now. I'm, I'm, no, I'm not done yet. So if we do have an error, then we'll, we'll see. Almost done, almost done, and... Oh, good, flash successful, okay? So hit your exit button now. Okay, for the most part now, we're done. We've flashed everything, everything looks good. So we're gonna set the radio here, okay? And I'm gonna leave that here. Zoom out just a little bit because I want you guys to also see what we're going to do for binding. Now I'm going to unplug this cable. Now if you don't have one of these Toolkit RCs, that's fine. You can use your flight controller to bind it or you can use anything you want to bind it. Remember the source is going to be 5 volts. I'm going to use this Toolkit RC and I do recommend, I mean for the price, these things are awesome, man. They'll tell you everything you need to know about your stuff. So I do give props to Toolkit RC for this. All right, so for what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my power source, which in this case is an AC to DC converter, but you can put a LiPo if you want, okay? So there we go, and then I'm gonna hold my bind button down, right? And I'm gonna power this up, and you're gonna see all three lights go solid. And there you go. So there's the blue light I was telling you about, and if that's on, that means you're an S-Bus. There's the red light, which should be blinking once you bind, and then there's your green light. Once you're done, you should, and you're bound, and you restart this, you should only see a green and a blue. The red won't be there anymore, okay? So here's our radio. And we're in bind mode, and I'm gonna go here to my uh, Toolkit RC, and I'm gonna go to the measure option. And I'm gonna hit the circle, and then I'm gonna go to S bus. I'm gonna hit the circle, and you see how you have your sticks here? So if this was bound and I move this, these would be moving, similar to what's on your radio, okay? And it'll give you your values and everything. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my radio, and I'm gonna tell it, okay, I'm gonna go to the right and hold. Once I get to my model options, I'm just gonna move over to the right quickly. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll up because they are, the binding is at the bottom of the list. It's a long list. So if you go up, it'll go in backwards order, start from the bottom up. So what we want to do is we want to look at the following, okay? Um, sorry, I went a little too high here. Uh, okay, so internal RF, right? This is the first thing that we want to look at. Let me see if I can zoom in on that just a little bit for you. Okay, so we have internal RF, and you can see where you have the options here. If you, if you were to click it and then move, you could have uh, ACC STD 16, you could have access to the new protocol or you could turn it off altogether if you are running the external module, okay? So we're gonna leave it on uh, ACC STD 16, all right? And now I do wanna show you also, you have your external RF. Now this would be for like the long range module or, or D8 module um, and uh, we're not running those. So make sure it's off, okay? So what we wanna do now is we're in model one. So we're gonna use RX1, that's how I number mine. And we're gonna tell it to bind, okay? And when we tell it to bind, it's gonna give us four options, so watch. Uh, channel one through eight telemetry on, channel one through eight telemetry off, uh, channel one through or channel nine through sixteen telemetry on, and nine through sixteen telemetry off. I'm going to do nine through sixteen telemetry on. Okay, I'm going to highlight that, 
and I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit now so you can watch and I'm going to click this button down press it and you're going to hear the chirping and look at my light you see the red light blinking then this is perfect this is what you want to see once you see that blinking go ahead and press your center joystick press it down again to stop it and now hit your exit button here and go back to your main screen there you go now you want to turn off your power source to your receiver okay and wait for it to completely turn off now watch when I turn it on you're gonna have RSSI here this is perfect and there you go now you have your RSSI signal you have two solid lights a green and a blue and if I go to my measure tab right and I hit enter and I go to S bus all of a sudden now uh, oh, wait I may not have this I don't have it um, routed properly that's my only problem so let me see what I'm gonna do here uh, so on my uh, page, I, I know I've got it put on here, but I've got to see if they've, I don't think any channels have been assigned. So let me, uh, let me see what I've got. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and exit this out. And let me take this out now and disconnect. And you're going to see now, watch my RSSI disappear. Okay, so there goes the RSSI, and now it's going to tell you your telemetry is lost. All right, I'm going to plug this back in. Telemetry recovered. Okay, so, so far, everything's looking good. Now, I'm hoping, and I want to just check something here because I want to show you this example. So if I go now and I hold the button down, That's not what I meant to do. That was setting fail signal. Let me hold this. Let me press this down real quick. You see how the blue is now blinking and it's gone. That means I'm in CPPM mode. And I forgot the reason you're not seeing this move here is because this is the S port, not the S bus plugged in on this one. So you won't see any movement. Now I want to. Now it, the blue light's gone. So I am in CPPM mode. I want to go ahead and press this again. Five and then let go. Uh, hold on, let me do 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let go. And now my red, my light, blue light comes on, and we're good to go. Okay? So there's that. Uh, I, I really was hoping that I could show you uh, this thing running like that, but I can't, unfortunately. Um, but you know what? Maybe I'll just make a concession here. Let me just unplug this real quick. Let me unplug this. Telemetry lost. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I think what I'll do is I'll just move this pin over one. Uh, and I'll make this the pin to use when not using an RXSR on here, okay? So let me, um, let me just move this pin over and I can give you guys an idea of what you can expect from a Toolkit RC uh, if this was connected uh, to the S bus, okay? So hold on, let's take this here and we're gonna move it over one tab to where the S bus would be. Such a small wire so I have to be careful here perfect okay now if I plug this in I should see stick movement I hope so this is going to go into our S bus out here we go and let's go ahead and plug this in and there you go you see the screen now so look as I move this now you can tell that we have everything set okay so we're perfect there. Everything's good to go. This is now ready to be mounted inside the quad, okay? Um, a few things though that we do wanna do ahead of time here uh, to set up on this for this model is we need to set our arming switches uh, and so forth. So um, let me go ahead and help you with that. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stick here and we're gonna go to the right and I'm gonna leave this up because you're gonna see how it affects this. So I'm gonna go to the right, hold it, and then I'm gonna tap over and we're gonna go to our inputs Okay, so input five, we're gonna make our arming input. So we're just gonna press the middle, middle down and um, we are going to tell it to uh, call it uh, arm. Whoops, A. Let's go ahead and scroll this up. R, M. And we're gonna call the input name arm as well. Okay. R. And that's going to M. That's going to take just a little bit of time, guys, but it's going to work out pretty good. Okay, so arm. There we go. And for that, we're going to go to our source and we're going to press the button so it's blinking. And I'm just going to flip the toggle switch here. I'm going to use a three-way switch for arming, so that's our SA switch. Once it's selected, I'm going to 
press the button again. I'm done here. I'm going to exit out. I'm going to go to channel six and I'm going to set that one and that's going to be mode. So I'm just going to put M O D. I think you can put four letters. Hold on. M O D and then, okay. So you can only put three here and then I'll go down a name and I'll put the all the full name. So M O God, I'm screwing this up here. D, E, okay, click that. And then again, I'm gonna use a three-way switch. So I'm gonna click that S2, to, it's blinking. Oh, I guess you guys can't see that, my apologies. Okay, so I'll show you like this. Okay, see if that works better for you. All right, and, uh, and then I'm gonna flip the switch here. So it's gonna switch to SB, okay? And then I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna exit out. So I, I didn't realize it was a glare there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show you how I got there. So I held this down to the right. Let me just move this over to the center here a little bit, try to get this out of the darn glare, sorry. Okay, so once we get to, again, we're gonna to hold to the right. No, once we get to our model screen, we're just gonna scroll to the right. And um, here's our input. So I did arm and mode, now don't worry, I'm gonna do another one here. So I'm gonna make this one our fail safe. So I'm just gonna click on the input and I'm gonna put, um, I don't need the gyro on this one. I'm gonna put fail, so F, a, I can only put in three letters, so this isn't really gonna help me much, but I'll still put in fail here. F, A, I, L, okay? Now for my source here, I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip this, uh, let's see, whichever one you want, I'm gonna make the right one, the fail safe over here, so I'm gonna flip that up, and that's your SD switch. Okay, and that's gonna be our fail safe. And once it's blinking and done, I'm gonna go ahead now and click that to stop. I'm gonna go back one more, and now we're gonna just put our buzzer. Okay, so channel eight will be buzzer. So let's just put B and, whoops. And then we're gonna go U. Okay, and we'll go down to name and we'll do the same thing. So let's get B. Oh my God, I keep doing this. You. Okay, so just, um, I know this is kind of tedious, but I think it's important again. So we spell buzzer, and then we're gonna go for our source, and this time we're gonna use the left side. Okay, and then we're gonna hit, that's it, it's, it's designated, it's good to go. So now we're done, we can hit exit, we'll go back to our inputs page. So now we've got everything, arm mode, fail, and buzzer. Now we're gonna go to our next page to go push this joystick to the right. Uh, sorry, hit exit, go to the right, and this is our mixer page. So now we're gonna go to channel five, and it's gonna be very easy, so we're gonna call this A, we're just gonna rename these. I don't it. A. R. And then M. Okay, that's it. And it's already got our source from, from the input five. So it's automatically done this. So you don't do anything else. Just hit exit. I'm gonna to go to six. And this is gonna be mode. M. Okay, so there's our mode, and seven is gonna be our fail. So F, A, I, O, I, L, okay. And then eight will be our buzzer. So B, U, And I don't know if it lets me write the whole word buzzer or not. It may just only allow me four, I can't remember. Uh, Z, E, 
Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. R. Okay, there we go. Exit. Okay, so now we have everything in line. I mean, this is perfect, right? So now um, we can just keep going here. Uh, and now watch our screen, okay? So let me, let me show you now. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so you can see now. So now I added the inputs, right? So watch this. You see how we're getting feedback now? So all the switches now uh, are functioning. And that's what we were hoping for, okay? So um, you're set. Now, the last thing you want to do <clears throat> is you're going to want to go, and you're going to want to hold this to the left. Once you get to here, you want to go to the right, okay? And you can go to your radio setup. So let's go ahead and set the date. All right. So it's 20. Oops. And then we're going to go, and it is 4. And today is the 8th. Okay, and it is right now 10, 10 a.m. Uh, and everything else really is okay. I'm not gonna really worry about this. Um, I think that what we're gonna do though is we know that we wanna do our, um, let's see. I think everything else looks fine. I'm not worried about any of this. Okay, so let's click exit. All right, and so now what we wanna do is let's go back and we need to get to our calibration, which is page six of seven, okay? So go ahead and do that and get to calibration and hit enter right there. Now it's gonna say hit enter to start and then it's gonna tell you to center everything. So put your stick where you feel is centered, okay? So kind of align everything the way you want because remember, this hasn't been calibrated yet, okay? So I think that the center is a little off from where it should be and then don't forget you've got these rolling here, these sliders here. So you want to go ahead and put those in the center where you think is center, just like that, okay? I don't know where that's center. It doesn't really matter for these. I don't barely use them. Okay, and it says hit enter when done. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now move the sticks. Go all the way left, all the way right, all the way left, all the way right, all the way top, all the way bottom, top and bottom. Now look, do not hammer on this thing because when you're flying, you're not hammering it. So if you hammer it now, you're never gonna reach those levels. Uh, you're going to have to really push the sticks when you're flying. Nobody's going to do that. So just push like normal. And then kind of just go around the perimeter, okay? Uh, but don't go too much. There you go. So you want to go all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. And then you're going to do the same with the left stick. All the way right, all the way left, down, up, left, right, whatever, up, down. And then just go to the corners, okay? And then take your sliders, go all the way uh, down, uh, okay? Just like that and then hit enter when you're done. Excellent. Now we can exit and your calibration is done and you are officially finished, okay, with your um, setup here, okay? Now, one last thing that we wanna do. If you look at your, uh, well, I'll show you this in, in, in Betaflight actually. So let's go ahead now and stop this video um, because this will be the end for those people that want to uh, just learn how to set this up. And for the rest of you, the second part of the video, which I'm gonna start right now, is gonna be the HDLRC installation video, okay? All right, guys, if you have any questions, please email me. Uh, hold on, let me get rid of this here. Do that, okay, so look, uh, email me. Do not, uh, use the contact page though. Please don't email my personal because uh, target side of the because to be honest with you, there's so many, I'm just not able to filter them all. And so it's taking me a few days to get back to people. But if you use the contact page, which is located here, then we issue you a ticket number. And then that becomes a priority ticket on my desk and I can respond to that rather quickly, okay? So please use our contact page. As always, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, we make videos for you guys at no charge. I don't ask for anything. I just ask that you please subscribe and help pass the word out on us, okay? Uh, all right, other than that, guys, God bless, be safe. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, like I said, which is gonna be installing this into the HDLRC. Other than that, spend time with your family. Uh, we're all stuck inside right now. Make the most of it, guys. Uh, this could be a blessing. God has at least given us a chance to spend time with our family, so make the most of it because you don't know how long you have left. Okay, so please enjoy it. your time. Fly safely and uh, peace. See ya.